So let's talk about the elastics that I use. For the waistband, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you'll know that I like this sport elastic. It's one and a quarter inch, and that's what I use for all of my exposed waistbands. And the reason that I like this is because it has a high stretchability and it stretches really softly. It also has a great recovery to it. The other part that I like is that it's not stiff. It actually will mold around your body instead of being so stiff and cutting into your actual body or hurting your skin. So that's why I like this. It has a little bit more give to it and it wears a little bit softer. So that's why I like that. And the other elastic that I use is this cotton swimwear elastic. And the reason I use this is because cotton holds up a lot better in the uh, water. You don't really have to worry about it shrinking even though it's cotton. It's already kind of pre-shrunk, especially with the elastic in it. Um, it just tends to hold up a lot better through the washing and if you're swimming in chlorine. You can, of course, purchase this, the elastic that looks similar to this. Um, it is white and it is called braided elastic. And I use 3 8 inch and that's what I usually predominantly use on all the leg openings or anywhere um, on any kind of kind of my swimwear that I have a leg opening or even on the underwear so this is the stuff that I like it's nice and soft it has a good stretchability and recovery and it actually washes up really well now the other elastic that I've begun to use in some of my newer patterns um, starting in 2020 is this other elastic called fold over or double fold and this is elastic it has a good stretchability and it's nice and soft it has two different sizes to sides to it um, there is a shiny side and then there is a matte side and I kind of prefer the matte side and in all my videos I will probably use the uh, matte side just because the lighting um, it will shimmer um, on the in the video and I don't want that to be distracting so I would use the matte side so there is a line here in the center and that is a fold line and that's where we would place the cut edge or raw edge of the fabric and then we would fold this over it and it has a nice fold to it and you would zigzag it on and of course if you have a cover stitch machine you can use the cover st stitch machine to attach this as well so understand you can use either side that you want this comes in a lot of different sizes you can get half inch which folded over would be a quarter inch um, in these videos um, unless I specify it I'm going to be using the one inch which is folds over to a half inch now understand if you choose to purchase the half inch which folds over to a quarter inch you'll have to adjust your zigzag width and length for those sizes Okay, so now for view A of the strapless sack, um, I'm choosing to line it. So I have two stacks of my pattern that I cut out. So one is gonna be the lining and one is gonna be the outside. However, when I do this, it's actually going to become reversible because I'm using the double fold or fold over elastic. So if you are not going to line it, then you just have one stack which consists of just the cut two of the self. So just like all my other pouches, we're going to stack the two stacks, so that's two pair, on top of each other. So I've got four of them because I'm lining it, and we're going to stitch them all together on this outside curve. So I'm just going to pin that all together so you can see where I'm gonna be stitching. 
and I'll stitch these all together with the overlock machine. So now we've got all of uh, four pieces, uh, two stacks, uh, sewn together. I'm going to turn them face side out so they have face sides on both sides of the sack, right? So and I want to make sure that these raw edges, these cut edges, are all aligned up with each other. So if you need to pin those, that is fine. I think they'll be okay. This fabric kind of likes to stick together. But what I meant by that is that you just want to keep those two stuck together so their edges are, are matching. Because now we're actually going to work on putting the double fold, the fold over, or the double fold. Now there are two sides to this. There are a shiny side and then there's a matte side. And you'll have to decide which side you want to show on the outside. I'm going to actually use the matte side because in the lights it kind of gets too shiny. So I'm actually going to use that side. So I'll be folding it over on itself like this. So what we're going to do, it doesn't matter which side you do it on because this is gonna be reversible and it's actually um, going to be you know, I don't have a I don't have a strap that's going to be put on here for a g-string because this really isn't a g-string. It's kind of like self all self-contained. So you can either do your face side with on the blue side, like I have a blue side and I have a green side. I'm going to go ahead and do the green side. And what we're going to do is we're going to line up my cut edge of around the pouch, around the outside of the pouch. I'm going to line that with that line that is in the middle of my fold over. It kind of wants to fold over on itself. So that's the line that I'm going to line my cut edge up. And then I'm just going to fold this over like that. And then I'm going to pin it in place. Now I'm not going to pin it all the way around because I'm going to need to stretch this elastic as I go. And I'm going to stretch it a little bit more. I'm not going to stretch it a lot, but I'm just going to stretch it um, a little bit more than I would if I were trying to get everything to come back together. If you jumped, if you saw the G-string tutorial, then you know that I just kind of tugged on it a little bit, but I'm gonna do just a little bit more than a tug. Now there is another option. If you want to fold the elastic in half and mark the center, so this is the center, then you can actually use that seam and actually you can center it if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. But I tried to give you the amounts that were pretty exact for the outside of this of the uh, actual pouch. So that doesn't give you a whole lot of stretch. So I like to stretch it a little bit more than that. So um, I gave you a little bit of extra for that reason. So understand that because this doesn't have the string at the base, you really kind of want the base, which is around this area, you really want that to be a little bit more snug to actually hold everything in. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch. I'm going to use four millimeter wide by four millimeter long and I'm gonna zigzag this double fold all the way around.
Okay, so now we have the double fold on, and I'm actually gonna remove these pins. I don't need those anymore. Um, and you can actually see, let me just show you, here's the pouch, and you can kind of see how it cups up. So that's what you want. That's why I stretched a little bit further right around this area um, to actually hold that up in place. Now we're actually ready to work with the waistband. So uh, this is the actually waistband, actual waistband, and we're actually using the double fold for the waistband as well. So what I'm going to do, I want the, the mat side to be on the outside. So I'm going to match the mat sides face to face together and fold it in half. And then I'll pin here. What I want to do with the cut edges is I want to sew them together using a half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to put a pin there. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually let me open this up. I'm going to clip little triangles out here so that those edges won't come out of the end. So um, I will actually do that here at the table so I can show you what I'm talking about. But right now I just want to sew this seam together at a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so I've got the uh, waistband sewn together in a ring, and I said I wanted to clip the corners out. So the reason I wanted to do that is if I fold this together, and if you can kind of see that under here, these corners tend to like stick out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip these little corners off, and I'll leave about a fat eighth of an inch there um, before the seam that I just stitched. Okay, so let me hold this up so you can see there with my finger that I've just kind of clipped off those corners. So when I fold this over, they won't stick out. It won't be as noticeable. All right, so now I'm actually going to fold this in half like where I had it before and I'm going to mark my center front. My center front. And then I'm going to pull my, bring my pouch over, and I'm actually just going to trim up these edges. I have a little extra here. So I'm just gonna trim this off. And then I have just a little bit extra here, so I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, so everything is even. Now I'm going to lay this out, right? So I'm gonna be putting my pouch where the shiny side is because I want the matte side out. So I'm going to line up my center seam here on the pouch to that pin. And then I'll go ahead and carefully take the pin out and then I'm gonna fold that over and then I'll pin that together, holding that in place. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing with the either side of this, line the edge up with that fold line of the fold over elastic and I'm going to pin it in place and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other side pin and pull put that in place and then I'll pin it okay now this is the outside and I have an idea I'm going to have to turn the pins they're going the right side right way so I actually want to start at the center back so I'll fold that over this way and I'm going to make sure that it, now there's nothing that's going to be twisted so I'm just going to pin that together as well and then I'm just going to walk around to where I'm going to be stitching and I do need to switch the pin position on all of these parts okay because I don't want to I don't want to um, have any kind of twists going around going around so um, here when I come to here 
So I'll start at the center back and I'll start there in the machine. I don't really need to pin these together because it's just easily folded together. So I'm gonna use the same zigzag length, four millimeter long by four millimeter wide. But when I get to here, when I just get to the beginning of the pouch, I'm actually just gonna back stitch to give it a little bit more stability and hold that on. So again, I'm gonna go over to the machine. I'm gonna start at the center back. Okay, so the waistband is on and actually your strapless sack is actually completed. It takes no time to make these. And why is this reversible? Because here is the blue side and then I can reverse this out to the green side and everything looks the same on either side using this double fold or fold over elastic. Okay, so we're ready to start working on the pouch of the strapless sack, and I can put the uh, pattern aside. So now I did not uh, line this. I'm choosing not to line it, but if you were choosing to line it, you would have two stacks, so you would have cut two pair, and you're gonna stack both the pair, the stack, the pairs on top of each other, and then you're going to stitch them together around the outside. Um, so I'm not lining this, this is actually a, a medium weight uh, jersey knit. Um, if you're using some way, something that's a very thin nylon or polyester, you may want to line it just to give it a little bit more body. But the construction is exactly the same way. However, once you actually sew around the outside, you would want to turn both sides so that the face sides of both of those fabrics are showing. So now let's prepare this. I'm just going to actually pin this together. Um, you don't have to pin it if your uh, fabric has body to it. I'm just going to pin this so you can see um, what I'm doing. So I'm just going to stitch here on the outside of the pouch. Okay, so the outside has been stitched together with an overlock, and let's just really quickly, let's turn this face side out and have a look at what this looks like. Okay, so it's just basically a pouch, and I've got a good seam on the outside, and I'm going to keep it like this for right now so you can see the inside uh, seam, because we're going to work with the uh, 3 8 elastic. Now, um, as I mentioned before in the intro, um, because this is a strapless um, sack, you want to be careful about the widths of the elastic you use. Anything wider than 3 eighths or even a half inch is actually going to diminish the ability of this to actually hold on to your body.
basically. So you want to use, you know, an eighth, and you won't be able to get smaller than an eighth inch elastic, but eighth inch, quarter inch, and I'm using three eighths just because I like that width because it goes through the overlock really well. So we're going to actually overlock this elastic to the edge around this pouch. Now the measurements that I gave you are actually pretty close to the same area of uh, length around the outside of this pouch. So um, I, it's hard for me to guesstimate how much stretch you're going to want. You could fold this in half and find the center of the elastic. Put a pin here for this center of the elastic and then pin it to the inside because we're, we're going to stitch this to the inside of the pouch and then fold it over and zigzag it down. So if this were the half of that on that seam, then you would walk the elastic up or match it to the top edge and then stretch it to fit. But I'm not a real fan of doing that. I want to I want to tell you to take this and then stretch it as you go, especially around this lower area here, which actually is needed to cup your body. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to pin it here at the top. I'm not going to do a lot of stretching here at the top, um, but I'm going to stretch it just a little bit just to get the fabric to go back to its original size because the overlock machine will stretch your fabric and the elastic as it goes. So, but once I get here to about the part where it starts cupping your body, I'm actually going to stretch the elastic just a little bit more just so I get a little bit more pull from the elastic and you will have to gauge this as you go. If I were to give you the elastic measurement, say that was two inches shorter, you would actually be stretching this whole area, but you don't need it stretched up here at the top. You just need it really stretched around the cup area. So I'm gonna start here at the top and you'll see me stretch this as I go. Okay, so now we've got the elastic on here on the out, outer edges of the sack. Um, and before we tur I turn this and pin it and explain the next step, I just want to call out that my piece of elastic fit perfectly in here, even though I was stretching it. I stretched it just a little around here, and then from here you can see this more rippling um, around this area. That's where I stretched it more, and it still actually equaled um, the actual outer edge and I didn't cut anything off before this ne segment of the video so that's actually how much your overlock or sewing machine will actually stretch the fabric and that's why I stretch the elastic as I'm sewing it on to bring the fabric back to its regular shape so now what we need to do is we need to turn this elastic into the inside and when you turn it you want to turn it so the fabric matches the edge of your elastic on this side so i'm going to turn it so it's nice and flush and we have this nice edge that it's not there's not extra fabric uh, folded over there so i'm just going to hold it like that 
and I'll put a pin in it. I'm not going to pin it all the way around because I'm going to have to stretch as I go and I just kind of like to turn it as I sew. I'm not a big pinner. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So zigzag stitch, I'm going to use a four millimeter width by four millimeter long. Okay, so now our pouch is pretty much all ready with the elastic is installed. Um, let's just set this aside for right now. We're gonna work on the elastic waistband. So this elastic that I like, it has a face side and a wrong side. So the face side is the more ribbed side, and then the other side, the flatter side, is the uh, wrong side. So I want the ribbed side out, so I'm going to match those face to face. And on the cut edges here, I'm gonna sew, on to sew this together at a, using a half inch seam allowance to create a ring. So I'm just gonna put a pin here. That's where I wanna sew. And then at the machine also, after I sew, I'm going to fold down these seam allowances and then I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch just to hold these edges down and to keep it from fraying. Okay, so now we have our elastic ring for our waistband, and I just need to find the center front. So I'm gonna fold here at that seam, fold this in half, and then I'm gonna mark where that center front is, which is the opposite of the center back. So now I'm gonna lay this out in front of me. So here's the center front, and then I'm gonna grab my pouch, and of course this is the uh, face side. So what I want to do is I basically just wanna lay my elastic right on top of the pouch matching the pin for the center front to that center front seam on the pouch. And so I'm actually just going to pin this in place down here at the bottom. Now you could put a pin up here as well to hold it in place to hold everything together if you'd like. And then I'm just going to match the cut edge of the pouch to the edge of the upper part of the elastic. And then I'll pin it. And I think I'm going to have to repin this. I think just because of the camera I pin this way and I'm right handed so it's easier for me to pin this way. I'll just redo the pins in just a second because I'm actually going to sew from this way to this way. So I'm gonna zigzag across the lower part of the elastic. You could do it at the top and not cut anything out, but I'm gonna cut the excess fabric off. Now when I start here, I'm gonna start with a back stitch with the zigzag and zigzag all the way across here and then I'll back stitch and zigzag there. So what I meant by switching the pins is that I'm going to put this in the machine this way, so I'm going to sew down this way, so I need to turn the pins going this way. And I'm going to be using the same zigzag stitch length, four millimeter long, four millimeter wide.
Okay, so we have the elastic waistband attached to the pouch. And I don't know if you saw this in the sewing uh, video part, but across here, uh, my machine skipped a couple of stitches. So what I did is I just ran another row of stitching right over on top. Now, of course, I'm using black thread, so you can see what I'm doing. If you're using white thread or a matching color, you probably wouldn't, it wouldn't be as noticeable. But now in the real world, if I was actually going to try to sell these and I'm using a zigzag stitch, I would have ripped that out and done it over again. That probably just means I need to change out my needle. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, it would just take a little bit more time for me to get this video out for you. So, but that's the process. Again, if you have a cover stitch, you can use a cover stitch machine to sew the elastic on and as well as to turn over the elastic to do the top stitching. So there's one more thing before I finish, the thing that I like to do. I like to cut off this excess fabric that is here. Now you don't have to do this. In fact, you could probably just cut, trim it just a little bit and do another zigzag stitch up here just to hold everything together. But I like to trim that off. So I'm just going to trim this. I'm going to keep about a nice fat eighth above my stitch line. That's just so it doesn't pull through to the stitches while I'm wearing it. And of course, if you don't like these pointed edges here, you could come in here and just do some tacking, additional tacking to hold that down. But with that done, this sack, the strapless sack is done.